Good morning and welcome. Welcome as we join together here and at home to worship God, whether for the first time, for the first time in a while, or whether a regular worshipper here. It's good to see everyone this morning. Today, immediately after the service, our Sunday school are holding a fundraiser. Uh, they're collecting money for the Homeless Project Scotland. So please do come through there instead of going here for your tea and coffee. Please do come through there, tea, coffee, home baking, and also, as this is the time of year when the church celebrates its birthday, come and have a piece of cake as well. The church is 93 years old this week. And it may be somebody else's birthday, so feel free to celebrate as well if it's yours. But please do give them your support if you're able. Once again, we're supporting the charity Smalls for All. The charity has been approached this year by those who are working with the homeless in this country and also schools across the country. There's a large pink bucket in the foyer as you come through the side door into the halls uh, for all donations. Thank you to all those who have already donated. And if you want more information about what to bring, please either speak to Dot Tracy or check out the details in our church magazine. Our warm space has started. It's on a Tuesday from one o'clock to three o'clock in the St Mungo Hall. Soup, tea and coffee, and a chance for a chat in a warm environment. No charge is made. Please pass the word around. It's with sadness that I have to announce the death of Billy Duncan. Billy is the son of former elder Jim Duncan. His funeral will be this Wednesday, 8th of February, at one o'clock at the Lynn. And our thoughts and prayers are with Billy's family and friends at this time. You may remember I recently announced the death of Mrs. Catherine Hogg. Catherine's funeral will take place this Wednesday, the 8th of February, at 10.45 at Dildowie Crematorium. And our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Cathy's family and friends at this time. Last week, I announced the death of Mrs. May Davidson. May's funeral will be on Wednesday, the 15th of February, so that's a week on Wednesday, 3 o'clock at the Lynn Crematorium. And our thoughts and prayers continue to be with May's family and friends at this time. And finally, can I welcome to lead us in worship this morning the Reverend Anne Deacons, who is Minister of Crawford United Free Church. Welcome back, Anne. Thank you. It's good to have you here, and we look forward to your message to us this morning. Oh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it's lovely to be here with you again, and I bring the greetings of the folks at Crawford UF. Uh, it's always nice to go somewhere different and see some new faces or old faces. I <laughs> don't know what I'm, what's the best thing to say there. But before I forget, uh, today are hymns. Now, some of them you maybe not have had before or you've maybe had them a long time ago. And you just need a wee reminder. So before we sing, Jonathan has agreed that he will play before every hymn. It's just in case I forget that uh, later on. But because uh, I'm like that, I do forget. <laughs> well, let's come before the Lord in our worship. Our call to worship is from Matthew 28. Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Let's sing together. Jesus is the name we honor. It's not mission phrase. It's the other book you use. CH4. Yeah. Jesus is the name we honor.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather here this morning. You, we gather in thanks. We give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for our relationship with you through him. And we give thanks for the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us. We give thanks, Lord, that you've called us to be your family here. And we give thanks for all that you have done for us in Christ. You have given a new dimension to our lives, a hope and a purpose not of this world, but you have given us a taste of eternal life with all the fulfillment that offers. You have given us, Lord, the resources to meet whatever challenges we may face. We praise you, Lord, that through faith, we are able to glimpse things as yet unseen, that we are part of the great company of your people in heaven and in earth, that we are a community together in a journey of discovery, that we are in Christ. But we thank you also that you've given us life in this world. You've called us to serve you in a particular place and time, that we are Christians here in Kings Park. And it's an honor, Lord, to serve you here. Transforming God, help us to recognize that you can use us, which seems small in our eyes beyond all imagining, that you can take the smallest of beginnings and bring it to the greatest of results. Teach us that you can use others, that you can use us, and that you can use anyone. Teach us to live not by our values, but by yours. To the glory of your name we pray, saying the prayer that you taught us to pray, our Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. We forgive our debts. Not into temptation, from evil. But thine is kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Well, it's great to be here this morning with all of you, and I'd like to share with you a small clip. It's a clip that I really like, and it's called Their Necessities. Did you like that? Is that good, sir? Anybody remember the name of the bear? You know his name? His name's Baloo. Baloo the bear, and I've got a big Baloo at home because I really like bears, and I really like Baloo. He's a favourite, so yes. But that song's a favourite of mine. In fact, it's my ringtone on my phone. So if you phone me, wherever you phone me, everybody gets to share in the bear necessities because I really like it. Wouldn't it be great just to live our life like Baloo, though? Eh? The bear necessities. Just do whatever you like. Wouldn't that be great? So if I just said just now, right, I'm finished for the day. And I'll just go and sit down and just relax and play on my phone. Yeah, if I was to do that, well, you would either sit and look at me. Maybe after a while, you would walk out the front door. Maybe you would all go that way to do you, because you're doing a fundraiser, aren't you? Yeah, and we're hoping for lots of people to come and support you in your fundraiser. But if we were all to be like Baloo, you see, that doesn't always go right when you live like that, because if you know the film, anybody that knows the film, you know what happens to the wee boy after that? The wee boy's name's Mowgli. And Mowgli is, is taken away by monkeys. They grab his ankles as he goes through those trees, they grab his ankles and they take him away. Uh, because Louis, the king, king of the monkeys, he wants to learn to live like a man. And so he wants man power, you see. So Mowgli gets into lots of trouble by listening to Baloo and living like Baloo. But if we choose to live a good life, we live a good life with Jesus. We don't follow anybody else, do we? When we're at school, you don't say, I'm going to do what they're doing because that might get you into trouble. You do what the teacher asks you to do, don't you? 
but you're supposed to. <laughs> you're supposed to. But if we follow life with Jesus, then we're doing the right thing. Because he'll help us. It doesn't mean we, would, we won't do anything wrong ever again. It doesn't mean that we won't get into scrapes or to have some problems in life. But with Jesus at our side to help us, it won't be like Mowgli and Baloo. It will be, Jesus will be strong for us and he'll be our guide and our help. And that's, so you can still have fun and you can watch films and you can learn from the, the Jungle Book film, actually. You can learn from lots of films. You can learn how to live your life a better way and not to do other things. But if we do that with Jesus beside us, then I think we've got the right idea there. That's why you come to church, isn't it? You learn more about Jesus. You learn about the way to live your life with Jesus. And that's what we all want to do, to have a life with Jesus. Because that's why we're all here together. We're a, we're a family together. You've got a big, big family here and all the people that are gathered with you. And we're a family in Jesus. And let's learn to follow him in our lives. But we're going to sing now your choruses. Because the last time I was here, you were doing all your choruses. And I thought that'd be a good idea, Jonathan, if we do the choruses together. Let's stand.
the reading from 1 Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. To conclude, you must have all the same attitude and the same feelings. Love one another as sisters and brothers, and be kind and humble with one another. Do not pay back with evil or cursing with evil. Instead, pay back with a blessing, because a blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. As the scripture says, whoever wants to enjoy life and wishes to see good times must keep from speaking evil and stop telling lies. They must turn away from evil and do good. They must strive for peace with all their heart. For the Lord watches over, over the righteous and listens to their prayers, but he opposes those who do evil. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you should suffer for doing what is right, how happy you are. Do not be afraid of anyone and do not worry. But have reverence for Christ in your hearts and honour him as Lord. Be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have in you. But do it with gentleness and respect. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are insulted, those who speak evil of your good conduct, sorry, is as followers of Christ will be ashamed of what they say. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if this should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once and for all. A good man on behalf of sinners, in order to lead you to God. He was put to death physically, but made alive spiritually. And in his spiritual existence, he went and preached to the imprisoned spirits. These were the spirits of those who had not obeyed God when he waited patiently during the days that Noah was building his ark. I beg your pardon, his boat. The few people in the boat, eight in all, were saved by the water, which was a symbol pointing to baptism, which now saves you. It is not the washing away of bodily dirt, but the promise made to God from a good conscience of Jesus Christ. Who was gone, who has gone to heaven and is at the right hand side of God? ruling over all angels and heavenly authorities and powers. Good idea. It's a great reading uh, to follow on from the bare necessities because it's the exact opposite, isn't it, of what Baloo's saying. He's saying that anything goes, whereas the reading from Peter tells us the way to live our life in Christ. And yet it ends with talking about baptism, baptism for the people of Noah's time, those who weren't in the ark. The New Testament sacraments instituted by Christ are baptism and the Lord's Supper. And the act of baptism is a physical representation of a new believer's old life being buried with the Lord and then raised to walk in the newness of life. Jesus died, was buried and resurrected. And the Christian identifies with Jesus by being immersed into the water of the baptism or the baptism of children, symbolizing death from old to new. And then being lifted up out of the water or marked by the water in infant baptism, so that when the child accepts Christ, we live a new life. 
to live a new life in a glorified new body in eternity eventually, but we live a new life in Christ is the one thing we want to do. If we're not baptized as a child, we want to come to the Lord for baptism or we take our, our baptism as a child and unite it with the Holy Spirit to be baptized in Christ. The physical practice of baptism is not found in the Old Testament. But Peter himself mentions it in this reading. And it's found in Genesis. God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. It was the boat in the water that saved their lives. It saved them from drowning. This water symbolizes baptism. And for us, water symbolizes baptism now. It's not the removal of dirt from the body, but the promise of a clear conscience, as Peter says. A clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Christ. Noah and his family going through the waters of the flood symbolizes New Testament baptism. That's what Peter is telling the people who read his letter. Peter links our salvation to the story of Noah using the waters of the flood as a type of baptism. Noah was saved through water. It saved its salvation for Noah, just as salvation for us is baptism. The difference is that Noah's salvation through the ark was temporary. And our salvation through Christ in our baptism is eternal. Now Peter here immediately explains that he's speaking spiritually. He says it's not the removal of dirt. It's a spiritual action. It's not washing flesh. It's spiritual. Our conscience is washed. All the water in the world that we have could not take away our sin. What makes baptism significant is not the fact that we get wet, but what happens on the inside. And that's exactly what Peter says. What makes baptism significant is the pledge or the answer of a heart that is right with God. So when a child gets baptized and their heart is right with God as they grow up, the baptism and the Spirit unite. Peter here is telling the folks who are reading and us today that baptism in Christ is where your new life begins. And many of us growing up in the, in the church have been baptized as children. But we must remember those moments when you suddenly realize that Christ has come off the paper, off the Bible, and into your heart. And that's when the Holy Spirit and that baptism, adult or child, actually works together. And gives you not the bare necessities of life, but gives you everything that you need for life. If you were baptized as a child, someone took you there. It could have been parents. It could have been an aunt, a grandmother. Someone did that for you, and we should give thanks for each and every person who took us to be baptized as a child to give us that special moment of knowing Jesus in our hearts through his spirit. And for those who were baptized as adults, well, you made that choice yourself, and hallelujah. When you came to Christ in the water and the spirit to have a right heart, every Christian since Jesus' ascension, has used baptism. Christ himself to show us the way. For he never needed to be baptized, but he show, showed to each and every one of us the way to God through the water of baptism and the Spirit in baptism. We have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and we come to him in baptism knowing that we truly know him in our hearts. It may just be a spring of water, but it is a water that cleanses 
and unites us with the Lord. Let's sing again. Jesus, take me as I am. Let's join together again in prayer. Living God, we come into your presence once more in prayer. We come to remember those whom we love. We come to remember those in our country in positions of authority and those in the world who suffer at this time. Lord, we remember our church family here and we ask for your blessing and peace over each one. Lord, there have been difficult days here as we've we've said goodbye to people that we care for, knowing that they are in your presence now, though, Lord, and we praise you for that. And now we remember Billy. We ask for your blessing and peace and comfort over his family. Be with the fellowship here as they join together, Lord, to give thanks for his life. Father, you gave us life. and You gave us life in Jesus Christ in all its fullness. And we give thanks to all who have gone before us to be with you, to know that fullness complete. Living God, We pray for our country. We pray for the leaders of our country. And as our country goes through a terrible time, Lord, so many things happening in our National Health Service, so much hatred and anger in the streets, so many people killed through being, as we say, in the wrong place at the wrong time. And yet, Lord, we look for a world where there is free from pain, free from suffering. 
We pray for our National Health Service and the burden that the staff are under. We ask that you be with each one of them through the times of fatigue and tiredness. For the many people who go, Lord, we, to hospitals, we ask that you give them patience as the staff try to help them. We pray for the police force, Lord, always in danger these days with the difficulties their work involves. Give all of them, Lord, the integrity and courage, patience and resolve they need and grant them your strength and your protection. Lord, we think of our schools today. We think of the teachers and the head teachers and lecturers, those involved in all areas of education. They are entrusted with the shaping of the lives of young people. And yet many young people struggle, Lord. They struggle to attend school. They struggle at times to think that, well, school, that's not going to help us. They want to be adults too soon, Lord. Give all teachers an insight and an understanding. Give them space to communicate their knowledge. And give their students an awareness that this is preparation for their future life, to grasp it with both hands. We pray for leaders in the church, Lord, for ministers, elders, deacons, for all roles in the Christian church, Lord, that need your help and support. We especially remember the Church of Scotland here as they go through many changes. Be with them, Lord, as they try to rearrange things in, in their parishes for the best thing for communities. Help them to center on Christ, the reason for the church. Help them to focus on his will and his ways so that churches may rise up in communities and that church groweth becomes alive once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear all our prayers, for we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Next one is Mark, first chapter one. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to clear the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make, it, make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the River Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, he saw heaven opening 
and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. Let's sing together again. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry. sure many of us were celebrating the result yesterday of the rugby and if you're watching it it was a special moment how many people have you actually spoken to about that game or maybe if you were a, a Rangers fan uh, some of them that I know were drawing a big long breath that they'd actually got over the line and, and won or you might have been Celtic fan or you, you might be like me a Hearts fan who was wondering if they were ever going to score, but scored three. <laughs> so how many people have you spoken to that about in the last couple of days? And how many people have you told about your baptism? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Jesus came. He did that for us. He jumped into the waters of sinful humanity to bring us back to life. And yet, how many people do we tell about that? God sent a man named John. The cousin of Jesus was quite a sight for everyone to behold. We're told about him. He broke with all religious traditions because he was baptizing Jews. That was a not, not a normal practice to baptize Jews in John's day. In John's day, the baptism was for Gentiles who wanted to become Jews. But he became completely different. He called people to repent, change their behavior. He asked them to come and be baptized in a new life. And no wonder then the Pharisees questioned him. John's parents were Zechariah and Elizabeth. 
both elderly people who God surprised with a baby. Now, we all have heard about Elizabeth and Zechariah recently, I'm sure, at Christmas time. We hear about the birth of John. Now, Luke tells us from John's boyhood until the day of his ministry, John lived in the desert, clothed in camel hair. He wore a leather belt and ate a steady diet of locusts and wild honey. And I've got some here with me. <laughs> Maybe not, eh? Locusts and wild honey. He offered, John offered a fire and brimstone call to repentance. He challenged people to change their lives, to change their behavior, and to prepare the way for the Messiah. Mark's Gospel tells us that Jesus traveled from Nazareth to the Jordan River, and once there, Jesus steps into the water for that baptism that he didn't need. He stepped into the water to save people like you and I who don't deserve any of it. He was fulfilling God's plan to save people who had been shunned and outlawed from his presence because they'd broken the commandments. So the scene is quite dramatic. Here is John preaching, people being baptized, confessing their sins. Then Jesus steps into the water and John proclaims, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. What a statement. What a statement and what a reaction he must have got to that. And that, those words were the beginning of our restoration to bring us back into a relationship, a friendship with God. And that becomes visible in the waters of Jordan when we hear the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased to dwell. You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. When Jesus is baptized by John, it proclaims to the world that God is entering into the battle against sin. He's entering into that battle to claim life back into eternal life. He's battling against the power of the devil, as Jesus did after his baptism when he went into the desert. God is declaring his place with Jesus Christ. By Jesus' baptism, he's entering and lifting that sin so that he can lift that sin the whole way to the cross and then on into his miraculous resurrection so that we could be saved. Today, us, that we, each and every one of us, can say in our baptism of the water and the Spirit, we are saved in Jesus Christ. The Bible is clear. People who have broken God's commandments need our lost and broken intimacy and peace with their God restored. You don't just say, I'll be okay. I'll be fine. I know the Lord. Jesus reminds us at times, not all those who call me Lord will enter the kingdom of God. But it's through baptism of water and the Spirit. From God's point of view, there's no one righteous. Not one. In this battle, this earthly battle with Satan, he constantly tempts every human being to replace God with personal selfishness. Because bobbing around in the water like Baloo sometimes is very attractive, isn't it? To sit back and do nothing. But John was calling people to repent. Jesus himself begins his ministry with the words, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come. Remember when he opens the scriptures and he says it's fulfilled today? This is the moment. C.S. Lewis has the definition of repentance. Fallen mankind is not simply an imperfect creature who needs improvement. He is a rebel who must lay down his arms. Laying down your arms, surrendering, saying you're sorry, realizing that you've been on the wrong track and getting ready to start life over again on the ground floor. 
This is the way out of our mess. The process of surrender called repentance. Now, repentance is no fun at all, says C.S. Lewis. It's something much harder than merely eating humble pie. It means unlearning all the self-conceit and self-will that we have been training ourselves into for thousands of years. I kind of agree with them there. That's our own selfish life, isn't it? We can be selfish. We can look out for number one always. And Jesus is calling us to look in the mirror. You look in the mirror before you leave the house. You look to make sure, I always make to make sure my collar is down because I have a habit of leaving my collar uh, up at the back. But Jesus is saying to us, no, have a good look at yourself in the mirror. He says that to me, look at yourself in the mirror, Anne. Do you see me back? That's what he says to all of us. Because in Jesus, we see how beautiful God made us. You see, if you see past all that destruction that sometimes we do, God says, look, I made you and I will restore you. Just join with me. So in baptism, we're returning home. The apostle Paul writes, to be in Christ is to do life in a new selfless style of living. Baptism, it gives us a new relationship with God. For just as the Holy Spirit was in Jesus in his baptism, so we too have that same Holy Spirit. Imagine that. It sometimes sounds like a lie, doesn't it? We have the same Holy Spirit which fell upon Jesus. But we do, because God is good. And God blesses us and gifts us. We cannot believe that Jesus is our Savior if the Holy Spirit had not touched our heart and mind with the gospel. It would just be words. The Apostle wrote, No one, the Apostle Paul writes, No one can say, Jesus is Lord, and really mean it, unless they've been touched with the baptism of water and spirit. Did you realize that your baptism was that important? Or is it just something that happened to you when you're not aware of it? Your baptism, my baptism, is important to God. It's important to bring the water and the Holy Spirit together and ignite a fire in us. Because the water doesn't put the fire out, it blesses the fire. The good news of the gospel is that we can do nothing to make ourselves more acceptable to God over and above what Jesus has already done at Calvary. By trusting in the blood of Jesus shed on the cross, we trust in him for our new life. But we have to do something for that. We have to testify that we've been baptized by Christ through water and spirit. How does that work then in life, though? How does that give us the conscience that, that works in our life? Well, imagine a tea bag being placed into hot water. Slowly, the tea bag begins to mix with the water, making the tea and the water one. The same thing happens for us when the Spirit of Jesus enters into our inner being. He joins himself to the inner spirit to our minds, our will, and our emotions. When Jesus speaks to you and me today, he does so through the words of Scripture. He speaks to our minds. He gives us a nudge at times to point us in the right direction again. That's why we should read Scripture daily. That's why we should pray daily, so that we will hear God's word and hear God's voice for ourselves that we'll hear God in our own lives. When the voice of God spoke and said, this is my own dear son, in whom I am pleased, Jesus' ministry was beginning through his baptism so that we may follow in his footsteps. 
So when we follow in Jesus' footsteps, we are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful gift we're giving. Baptism water alone will never save us, but a baptism of faith will bring us into eternal life with Christ. Our actions will show others that we're in a life baptized in faith and actions, a life of love for the Scriptures and love for our fellow Christians, a life with the Father's own dear Son. And baptism is not just for that day. It's a lifetime of new life in Christ. Amen. Let's sing together again. Let's sing all to Jesus, I surrender.
We continue to worship the Lord as our offering is brought forward. I'd like us now to just take a moment to think about our life with Christ, our baptism with Christ, our relationship with him, and give thanks to him for all that he has done as we just reflect and listen to the river.
We close our service by singing, Tell Out My Soul. love of God, the journey with Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit fill us and lead us. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen.